So a lot of people are asking the question, is now a good time to buy? But we, maybe we should be asking, is now a good time to go be a renter? My buddy Keaton Yellis is here. What's going on, Keaton? Thank you for having me on, Derek. Yeah, great to see you, brother. Pleasure. So this question, is now a good time to be a renter? You know, everyone's talking about the market. You know, it's, it's softened. It's gotten better for buyers recently, but a lot of buyers are kind of going uh, away. You know, they don't like the action uh, that they're seeing or they're hearing stuff about recessions and things that are kind of scaring people off and towards the, the direction of renting. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should take that question head on. Like, hey, is now a good time to be a renter? What are your thoughts? Um, that's a great question. And I think ultimately it depends on your life situation and where you're at with that. Um, you know, from like year over year, I've seen rents steadily increase and, you know, um, it's 20% last year, 20% yeah. last year. And then, um, and th this is with like minimal upgrades. It's not like it's a brand new, you know, a class building or something. This is something, you know, for example, in like North park, something that would have rented for 2,500 is now 3,200. Right. Um, and so, and they, and I presume most landlords plan on raising their rent every year, right? So you're kind of, it's almost like a revolving door. Um, maybe you can get like into a, a six month rental um, or something like that where it could be beneficial for your life circumstance. Like if you're coming here, you're looking for a new job, um, you know, or if, if, you know, you just had a transfer or something along these lines, or if you're waiting for family from, you know, coming from elsewhere, um, then maybe that's a good time to rent. Good point. Yeah. Let's, let's list those times out. Okay. So yeah. let's say you, you're new to San Diego. You have no idea. Mm. You just got a job transfer or maybe you're in the military or something like that. You just got here. You have no clue what any of the neighborhoods have to offer. Right. Maybe it does make sense. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll rent for a year, figure out what I want to do next, figure out what plate, what areas I like mm -hmm. to hang out in, which ones I might want to live in. That to me totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so if that situation, it, it probably is a good time to rent, right? or you're waiting for something, maybe you can't buy for some reason, you've been self-employed for a shorter period of time or something like that, you, you can't buy, right. um, you, you just don't qualify yet even though you're making money and just don't fit into the lending box yet. Right. Um, so you know, that in that situation, it makes sense to rent. Um, if, you, if you're really unsure about where you want to live, maybe you have lived in San Diego for a couple of years but you just don't know for sure where you wanna be long-term. Um, Start researching it. You know, don't don't let seven, eleven years go by. I talk to so many people every day who've been renting for the last decade. Yeah, you know? and they're like, we really want to buy. Mm -hmm. We've just gotten comfortable, uh, and you know, we, we we like our area. Okay, so you know where you want to live. Yeah, great. Let's make a plan so that you can own in that area instead of paying someone else's mortgage. So, in those situations, I think it's good to rent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in, in, if we talk about is now a good time to be a renter, well, we're on two years in a row of significant rent hikes. I don't know if you saw this article uh, in CNBC yesterday, but it's the, five, the top five metro areas in the country where rent is the highest. Mm -hmm. San Diego, number two on that list. Wow. LA, number one. Mm. And four out of the five places, metro areas with the highest rents in the country are in Southern California. Yeah. You know, which which makes sense, right? Sunshine like, tax. Yeah, man, yeah. that's a great place to be. Right. So I get it. You know, that's also why home values go up here. That's a, you know, living expenses here are more expensive because it's a beautiful place to live. So you're not going to get a break by renting. You know, and that's one thing I think people believe. That, well, it's going to be cheaper for me to rent. Right. Um, that's definitely not true. But it might be more convenient. Right. For a certain period of time. Yeah, so I would I would ask the question: In which way would it be cheaper for you to rent for the next year? Right. Well, yeah, good mm -hmm. question to ask. You know, well, I don't have to put a down a huge down payment, or you know, I don't uh, maybe I don't have to pay uh, taxes and insurance. Um, you know, sometimes when people just look, okay, well, it costs me you know five thousand a month to buy a house. It costs me four thousand to rent. Mm -hmm. But in that five thousand, I'm getting tax deductions and opportunity for appreciation and all sorts of the paying down principal. Mm -hmm. Those things are all going on, so you kind of have to factor all that stuff in. Yeah. Uh, but just on the surface, cash flow wise, the payment here is higher than it is over here. In a, in a lot of cases, that's that's true. Mm -hmm. Some in some it's not because rents have gone up so much. Um, but it's one thing is for sure. And this is my biggest piece of advice: renting is not a good long term strategy. It can be a good short term strategy. It is not a good long-term strategy. Long-term, it costs you money. It's just you whoosh, flushing money down the toilet over a long period of time. Short period of time, circumstantial, 
you know, give you time to research, give you time to figure things out, give you time to sort out where you want to be, totally makes sense. Or if you're in a temporary job or something like that, totally get it. Mm -hmm. um, but for people who want to be in San Diego for a long period of time, renting is always, should just be a temporary thing, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Like that same example, if you rent for a year at five, you know, or at five grand, let's just call it, you know, you're 60 grand a year, you do that you know, two years in a row, 120 grand, right? It's a lot of money, man. It's a lot of money that you turn, like if you were to look back in hindsight, you know, two years goes by like that, as we know, right? Yeah. And so if you started renting, if you're like, let's say you're in escrow to buy something, the pandemic happened, you're like, I'm going to rent, see how this whole thing plays out. <clears throat> and now, let's say after those two years, you're feeling good, you're feeling confident about, you know, getting back out into the world and you go to, to, to buy, you know, you essentially are looking back at 120 grand that's just, disappeared it's gone it's gone yeah you have nothing to show for it and not only that over that period of time rates have gone up and prices have gone up significantly so that's right. that's the other thing that's really hard you know to predict mm -hmm. when you are in a situation where you're you're renting it's like okay I'm deciding to rent especially for people who are capable of buying so let's talk about that right that individual so hey we're capable of buying mm -hmm. we're choosing to rent because we think it's a smarter financial strategy for us um, to wait and see what happens. We're worried about prices dropping. We're worried about a crash. We're worried about a recession. These are all things that are being talked about in the news over and over and over. Right. We're worried about all these things. Um, here's the thing. Sellers also worried about those things. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So if you ever want to catch a seller in a, a compromised situation. Now's the time. <laughs> yeah. Right? 100%. And then, like you said, in the long haul, um, you know, What's your intention with the property? Do you plan on being, you know, do you have small kids? Do you plan on being there for three to five years, 10 years? Um, we all know that there's a deal in every market, right? Even if, um, you know, the worst of the worst, there's a deal to be had um, if you know the market, right? right. So, um, you know, if your intention is, is to stay in that area for somewhat of a decent time, or even, even if you, you're like, ah, I don't know, I might get change orders in two years, but you know that historically in the last like 12 months, things have been selling for this, this, and that, then if you can come into a seller where there's a little bit of you know, um, uncertainty and get, let's just call it even 5% off the sticker price of what things were trading for recently, um, then you know that you're gonna be pretty set. Especially if you, you know, then you can incorporate like value add strategies and stuff like that, come in, change the paint, floors, et cetera, um, which, you know, you're, you're, it's tried and true to win, right? So you can kind of position yourself with an exit strategy going into it and still reap the benefits in the short term. Short term, I mean two years, right? Versus 10 years or 30 years um, if it's your forever home or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So that could be the strategy. It's like, I'm able to buy, um, but I want to wait and see, you know, how this whole thing plays out. Well, then you could just adjust your strategy. Instead of looking for a turnkey forever home where they're, you know, you may, you know, it may be more challenging to get a significant um, increase in value, right? When you go to sell, especially after paying broker fees and kind of recouping some of your your uh, your money, then that could be a play. That could be, yeah. yeah. And I think also when you look at what people were paying in 2020, even 2021 for homes, when rates were at their all-time lows, one thing that you have as an advantage now is you actually have the opportunity to potentially refinance down the road. Yeah. So like, top. you know what I mean? Like when, mm -hmm. when people were buying homes for higher than they are today and they were getting two and a quarter or 2.75 on conventional loans, to stupid low rates, um, that was as good as it's going to get for them. Mm -hmm. There was no like possibility, you know, of that payment dropping or right. anything. That was just as good as it's going to get. You're buying a house today with a four or something or five something percent rate. There's a really good chance. And I mean, a very, very good chance and then the next couple of years, you'll be able to knock that down a percent or two and lower your payments. So you have potential upside mm -hmm. in buying in today's market, not just in the negotiations right. off the price, but also, also financing. future, yeah, yeah, future cost of ownership. Because when we look at what it costs to own a home, and this is another nugget I really need you to, to soak this one in, it's not what you pay for the home, the sales price. It's how much the home costs you to own. So the cost of ownership is based on how much you pay over time. So the amount that you pay over time is 30 years of making payments, right? So if you pay you know, payments at 5% rate today, let's say for example, for a year or two or even three, let's say, 
but then you refinance to 3% for the remainder, your cost to own that home has gone down a tremendous amount. Right. And so that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at, well, we, you know, we don't want to pay this price because we think it'll go lower. Mm-hmm. We think we can get something, let's say this home is 730, we think we can get one for 680 you know, next year. Okay, well, you're going to spend 60000 in rent, so you'll be upside down ten grand on that. And if rates are lower, you'll say, oh, well, see, we were right because rates went down. But if you had bought it, you could have just refinanced anyway. Right. So you see what I mean? Like the, yeah. the, the opportunity for upside with the idea that the market is going to go down is a, a very, it's threading the needle. I mean, you have to get everything just right. Mm-hmm. You really have to get lucky. Mm-hmm. It's a hard thing to do. But when you look at what opportunities are here now, as you were saying, hey, what's the opportunity? What's the strategy? How do I shift my strategy? How do I strategize based on what the market's giving me? Mm -hmm. Instead of hoping that the market turns over something perfect for me at my perfect timing. Right. And I think that's education to your point is, you know, if you can tell your client, if you're a realtor or whatever box, whatever hat you're wearing, if you could say, hey, look, this is how it can pan out in the next six to six months to a year. Um, then you can kind of go into it with, with the, you know, the foresight that you can do that. Now, of course, you have your monthly obligations every month, so you don't want to get into something where you're, you know, over your head and, you know, it compromises your quality of life um, just because you wanted to get into something. Um, Agreed. Right. Yeah. yeah. Be smart about it. Make sure it makes sense. Keaton English, amazing information. Thank you so much for coming Thank in you, today. Terry. Hey, guys, Appreciate share it, this with your friends. Let's help make them smarter than everyone else.